What's up, it's Eddie with Guitar Master Method and I'm about to show you a four note box that's real simple, straightforward, and will get you kick started on the path to soloing in a way that's musical and expressive. But be sure to stick around to the very end of the lesson because I've got a free gift for you and your guitar that you're both gonna love. So this four note box that we're gonna explore can give us a whole lot of mileage when it comes to soloing. So let's get into that. So this is all contained within, like I said, a four note box. And in this case, like in the beginning of the video, we're in the key of E, I was playing over a Chicago style E blues. So we were focusing, starting off with the minor pentatonic. So this initial four box I'm gonna show you right here, starting on the 12th fret of the D string, then the 14th fret, then the 12th fret of the G string, and then the 14th fret. So these four notes right here, if you'd like to know the exact note names, we have D, E, G, and A. These are four notes contained within the minor pentatonic scale in E, right? So this is what we're gonna be working with in the beginning. But let me show you how we can get more mileage out of this just from this one little box here. Now before I get into that though, I do wanna preface this by saying there is a whole lot to be found in just this one box right here. It's not just about playing these notes in a static sort of straightforward way. You know, there's all kinds of little guitar linguistics you can pepper in, like vibrato, slides, you know, hammer-ons, pull-off, all that kind of stuff. So even in a small four-note box like this, you can find an, really an infinite uh, uh, well of ideas musically, as long as you really push the limits on those musical ideas just by staying within the confines of those four notes. But of course, we can expand way, you know, well beyond that in, in a way that's exponential by doing what I like to call the three for one octave system, where we basically use the octave system to find two additional octaves for this same four note box. So let's start with the lower octave. All we're gonna have to do, it's really simple, starting with the, uh, the top notes here, right? We have the 12th fret and the 14th fret on the uh, D string here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down two frets, right? One, two and then we're gonna bring it up one string, and then we have this same four note box, which is now 10, 12 on low E, 10, 12 on A, and the notes are D, E, G, A, just like these notes, D, E, G, A, but we're now an octave lower. So you can hear those are the same notes. All right, but we're not even done. We're actually only two thirds of the way done. We have an additional octave that we can find using this three for one octave system. So in order to find the upper octave, we're actually gonna move up. So in this position here, starting on the, between the 12 and 14 frets right here on the G string, we're gonna move up three frets, one, two, three. And we're gonna start by moving down one string. So starting on the B string now, we're now playing 15 and 17. And then 15, that's on the B string, 15 and 17 and then 15, 17 on the high E string. And these notes are D, E, G, A. All right, so the same exact notes. We now have them in three octaves, so three for one. And the cool thing about this particular layout, so it's not like a linear scale pattern, it's like just three boxes spread across the fretboard in this little neighborhood here. What's great about that is it, it discourages the uh, tendency to noodle, right? Because if you're given a very uh, sort of a, a linear pattern that's uh, kind of makes sense ergonomically with your fingers, especially in the beginning, it can, it can uh, very easily be tempting to just walk up and down the scale or get caught up in just one way of playing it. So when you have these additional boxes, you kind of have to get creative when you're navigating through them. But like with anything, you want to obviously start simple. So I like this middle octave here as a starting point, right? So if we have these four notes to work with, right? If we're playing in the key of E, which that's our root note right there, right? Because remember we have D, E, G, A. So E is our root note, which is a great safety net. So when in doubt, just hang on that root note and then test the tension of the other notes when you're soloing to, let's say, that backing track that I, that I played over in the beginning of the video and see you know, if those notes like kind of where they work, which in this case we're playing over a blues, so these notes are pretty much gonna work because the minor pentatonic is the tried and true scale of choice for blues guitar players. 
So what you can do just to get acquainted with the notes is just kind of like wander through the scale a little bit or through the Bach. So that you're not caught up in the trap of just playing it up and down like this. You don't want to do that. It's not a good habit to build because if you do that for too long, you're going to be stuck in just one way of playing it and then you're going to get bored, right? And you're going to think the problem is this it's the fact that you only have four notes. You're going to feel limited, but you want to feel unlimited with even a four note box like this, right? So that's why I was saying little techniques like vibrato, slides. There's an infinite number of ideas you can come up with if you throw in all those little additional embellishments, right? And of course, we can always use guitar legends like B.B. King, for example. Like, I mean, he could make four notes sound good all night long, right? And, and, and these are the same four notes. We have access to the same four notes that he did, you know? So he blazed that trail for us. So if he can do it, we can at least be inspired to try. You know what I mean? So we have those, we have those four notes, right? And then we have those additional octaves. And it's great because even though they're the same notes, you have a different sound when you're reaching a new octave, you know? So if I were to do something like this, simple, right? Starting with a slide into the root note, right? Then playing that G note there, right? Then back to that root and then a little bend on that A note, right? So the 14th fret on the G string, bending it up, bringing it down to that G. So that sounds more like a phrase as opposed to just going, you know what I mean? Just what world of difference there. But when I move up an octave, you know, and just change it up a little bit, it gives it a completely different sound. So you don't think that just because you're playing the same notes, but in a different octave that they somehow are just, it's just going to be more repetitive. It's just ways to find different uh, timbres, right? To like different qualities of sound to those same notes, because when you play them in a different octave, like, like that's cool. That doesn't sound like, which that sounds cool too, but sounds different, even though they're technically the same notes played in the same way. So keep that in mind. Even if you were to repeat licks in a, you know, and play them exactly the same way across those octaves, they'll have a different sound. So let's field test what we just learned. I'm going to throw that backing track back on and I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Try to be as expressive and, and just musical as possible just within those four notes so I can drive the point home on what I'm talking about. So great example there, if I can say so myself, just in the fact that it was like, I was focusing on phrasing, letting the notes breathe, but making those four notes feel interesting. And I was exploring the different octaves, I was playing some of the same licks in the different octaves, but just really finding ways to create musical sentences. And, you know, I wasn't able to noodle quite as easily because of how spread out those boxes are. It's nice because in a way it discourages you from going into that automatic state of just playing the notes up and down. But we're still not done. We actually have another group of four notes that's gonna be really helpful, especially in a blues kind of situation. We're gonna take a very similar box. In fact, I would say it's the exact same shape. We're just gonna shift it to a new position, but we're still gonna be in the key of E, only this time we're gonna get a major tonality out of it. So we're essentially going to be transferring from a minor pentatonic, right, to a major pentatonic. And here's how we do it. Starting with the middle position here, that middle four note box that we already know now. If we were to shift that down three frets, one, two, three, and play that same finger pattern. We are now in E major pentatonic. So we're playing the ninth fret here on the D string, then the 11th fret and then the ninth fret and 11th fret of the G string. And the notes are B, C sharp, E, F sharp. So we're, it, it's a different collection of notes compared to what we saw in the minor pentatonic, but we do have that root note in there. E is right here, only instead of here, like in the minor pentatonic box, we now have it here in the major pentatonic box, just in a different position. So it's now on the ninth fret of the G string. 
But in the way that those notes interact with each other in relation to the root note, you get that major tonality. So you can do the same thing where if you want a safety note, you can hang on that root note. You know, but you now have these surrounding notes that give it a different sound. So in the same kind of you know approach, you can wander through those four notes in, in kind of a random order so that you're not caught doing this. Right, we, we, we wanna do away with that. Like no matter what scale you're learning, never approach it that way just because it just leads to, always leads down to that path of burning yourself out really quickly on just really one way of playing a scale. You don't wanna do that. Believe me, it takes years to break the, ha the habit of doing that too, unfortunately. So if, if you're already in that position, just know that a good way to actually break that habit is to just take whatever order that you normally approach notes with and then just essentially disrupt it. Like just do random notes instead. So that's why I say approach it randomly, kind of wander through it. It's just four notes, easy to wander through. You know, you can just do it in a random order and you might stumble across an order of notes that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of that might be pretty interesting. But of course we still have the three for one octave system and it definitely applies here as well. So starting with finding that low octave, Remember, we're going to take this middle position here, we're gonna shift down two frets, one, two, and then bring it up one string. So we're now gonna be on the seventh and ninth frets on the low E and the A string. Hear how the notes are the same? All right, we have B, C sharp, E, F sharp. So there you go, same deal. Now we wanna bring this up uh, to a higher octave, so we, we go back to that middle position, and we shift up three frets, one, two, three, and then down to the B string here. So starting on the 12th fret of the B string to the 14th fret, and then 12, 14 on high E. So we have B, C sharp, E, F sharp. Same notes, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> And check this out. Now we have that and the the minor pentatonic boxes too. And those both can be used interchangeably and they work perfectly over a blues. And as far as the ratio between the two, I like to give it kind of a 70-30 split. Uh, you know, maybe 60-40 depending, right? But 70-30 uh, where it's 70% a minor pentatonic, 30% major pentatonic. Because if you spend too much time on major pentatonic over a blues, uh, it can start to sound a little more blues adjacent and they even kind of take you away from blues. Maybe it'll sound a little bit more country or a little bit more just like outside of just like that, uh, that very uh, uh, you know, recognizable blues sound. That minor pentatonic will take you there all day long. But when you pepper in a little bit of major pentatonic tonality, it can keep it interesting and even give it kind of a gospel sound, you know? So there are great ways to combine the two. Now remember, the root note's in a different position when you're dealing with the major pentatonic. Right? And then when you're going into the minor pentatonic, you got your root note there. So, you know, if you're new to soloing, just focus on that root note as, as a safety net, like I said, and then just experiment with the different notes over the backing track. Just kind of see, you know, what you kind of vibe with and then just create very, very simple licks and apply those little bit of embellishments, you know, to make it more interesting. So I'm gonna throw that backing track on once again, and I'm gonna demonstrate what I'm talking about with that 70-30 split between minor and major pentatonic. like a healthy 70-30-ish ratio when it comes to major and minor pentatonic. I like to start off a phrase with major pentatonic, you know. Especially sounds really gospely and I like that, you know, but it's always great to follow it up with a minor pentatonic lick, you know. So when you're, when you're learning to go back and forth, let's say, between the major and minor pentatonic, start off with just staying in the same octave, right? So go between this box to this one. And that's actually a great way to kind of test the waters between 
the tonality of both, because obviously you want to make it flow, right? You don't want it to feel so much like you're cut and pasting when it comes to uh, just like, okay, here's minor, here's major, but you want it to flow in a way that's musical and feels like a phrase, you know? So that way when you're, when you're listening to it, when you're listening to yourself play it, it doesn't necessarily feel like, okay, here's minor, here's major. It's more like, here's some music, right? And then when you examine it later, you can be like, oh yeah, I was doing a little bit of minor, a little bit of major, maybe in a 70-30 split, you know, or however you identify with the most. You know, I'm just giving you my opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean it's uh, uh, gospel. It's definitely not. The only thing that's gospel about this is uh, this. That's sounding. You know, just to get that really, really nice kind of happy uh, tonality, you know, and then of course you follow it up with some minor pentatonic, gives it a little bit of attitude. That's the thing I like about mixing major and minor is that you can start off like kind of happy and jovial, you know, and then put a little bit of stank on it towards the end, you know. That's why doing something like... I just like, there's something about it, like I can't help but make this dumb face, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, that's what I love about combining those kind of tonalities. Now, of course, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but over some, you know, a track like this, like a, a blues style track, I mean, there's a lot of room to try it out and see where it works. Like you can give yourself permission to do it because it's done all the time in blues. So now you have your essential four note toolkit to get you started with soloing or add some spice to your current soloing chops. And today we just focus on the key of E, but imagine being able to do it in any key, anywhere on the fretboard. That'd be pretty cool, right? Well, remember that free gift I was telling you about? Since you made it to the end of the lesson, I gotta make good on my word. So, it's right here. This right here is the fretboard conveyor belt system. And this has already helped thousands of guitar players online learn how to confidently solo on the fretboard in any key. So today we did the key of E, but tomorrow, all the keys. So be sure to click here to claim your free copy or check that link in the description box. One of the things I love about music is that it never has to be complicated to be enjoyed and to be inspirational. And that's why you can get a whole lot of music out of just four notes. It's pretty cool, right? 